It's something that no one wants to think about, the fact that there could be tiny pieces of plastic in the foods they're eating. But the Food and Drug Administration is monitoring research on microplastics and nanoplastics in foods. Dr. Christopher Hine at the Lerner Research Institute at the Cleveland Clinic joins me now with more. Dr. Hine, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So this is all fairly new, uh, I believe, for the FDA to address. What is causing plastics to enter our food supply? It's a great question. The majority of plastics in our food supplies are actually byproducts of major plastic breakdown in consumer goods, such as plastic pa packaging, plastic bottles, um, even food receipts and receipts we get from uh, the supermarket. Um, those break down and release plastics into the environment. Eventually, those go to uh, water sources, rivers, lakes, streams, uh, fish, crustaceans eat those, and then we eat the fish or crustaceans, or we consume uh, the water that might be contaminated with the plastic. Do we know yet how much microscopic amounts of plastic can possibly in be in foods? Science is getting better and better by the day. Um, normally, you think of things called microplastics, and we've known about microplastics for at least 10 or 20 years. The new thing in science are things called nanoplastics. These are extremely small pieces of plastic. Um, really, only the past two years, um, we've been having the technology to, um, to measure these and to detect these in our foodstuffs. So what are the, the most likely foods that we might enjoy that might possibly have some levels of the uh, microplastics or nanoplastics in them? Surprisingly, it's, it looks like all foodstuffs has, uh, has plastics in there. Of course, there are some types of foods that have more, um, so such as rice um, has um, abnormally high levels of plastics in, in rice. Uh, and this comes to like the, the ready rice. So organic rice or rice that might take a long time to cook usually has lower amounts of plastics in them than say the, the ready cooked rices. Um, but basically anything you're consuming most of it has some plastic in it. Um, and also depends on how long it's been in the pa plastic packaging. So if you have bottled water that's been sitting in your car for a long time in the heat of the summer, there's going to be more microplastics and nanoplastics in that water you drink versus, say, water you're getting straight out of the tap to drink. Are there potential health risks of plastics getting into our bodies? To a certain extent, yes. And I don't, I don't want to be an alarmist. Um, you know, we've been exposed to plastics, at least in the United States, since the 1950s and 1960s. And plastics made, you know, 10, 20, 50 years ago were not as good as the plastics that are made today. And so there really aren't so severe or acute uh, um, concerns when it comes to plastic exposure. However, you should try to limit to the best of your ability. Um, in our research in preclinical models, we have seen that early life exposure to plastics, uh, such as bisphenol A, can cause for body composition modifications in later life, such as in our preclinical models having more fat mass versus lean mass. Um, so that, that can change. Um, some plastics can also interfere with hormonal signaling, such as estrogen or thyroid hormone activity. Um, and so those things can modify our metabolism. Um, they can also modify potentially uh, growth in, in, in pubertal development. So here's a, a question I, I never thought I'd ask. What options do consumers have to make sure that their diets are plastic free? <laughs> Great question. Like I said, majority of the foods we're going to consume are going to have some amount of plastics in there, but there are always ways we can mitigate that. Um, one way, of course, is uh, consuming uh, at least water from the tap. So if you live in a municipality that has clean drinking water, feel free to drink it out of the tap versus drinking out of bottled water. If you do have bottled water, um, it's a good idea to keep it out of sunlight, keep that in uh, temperatures that are relatively cool, such as room temperature, and avoid keeping those in, in your cars for long periods of time. Other aspects are packaging um, for plastics that aren't made for the microwave or the dishwasher. You shouldn't put those in the microwave or dishwasher. That's a really good way for releasing plastics into your food. So um, if it's not labeled safe for microwave or not labeled safe for the dishwasher, I don't recommend you, know, you put those into those, um, those appliances. Yeah, some great tips and uh, some, some more to think about, uh, certainly uh, when we're eating and drinking and, and all, the, all that stuff. So Dr. Hine, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You